Send or no send for Doug. Oh, gosh. Uh, I, I guess I gotta give this disclaimer. Chevy's not responsible for any tire rods broken, rocks broken, trucks broken, axles snapped, exhaust snapped, or rocks that go through your face when you're rock climbing. Thanks. Oh, man. Life. So as I'm recording this, I heard Kenny Rogers. He's well known for the song The Gambler. Well... So, Kenny passed away today, which is kind of sad, and I want to say this because some of the songs we'll use in this AD series, like As We're Seen Along to the Radio, and it's uh, uh, it's it's pretty sad. I think he was 81 years old, so lived pretty darn far, but uh, the first song I've ever heard of him was The Gambler, and it's probably my favorite song from him, uh, but it's sad. I'll put, uh, I'll put the link to The Gambler in case you guys don't know it, but as we get going with the series, what we got is, well... Oats are ready. I'm going to go out to the field, make sure they're ready, and harvest is here. It's it's early autumn, day one of early autumn, which our corn is coming in close. So, like, we've done all this, we've got everything done, and we've got everything planned, and now it's just time to take in the rewards, I guess, if we get any profit this year. Who knows? But we'll try to make back some money. Now, a couple things. We sold the 4755. A younger farmer came in. He bought it. He paid me right up front, went to the bank, got the loan, and he bought that thing. So all we have left is the 4955. So our two biggest tractors are, of course, the big old Massey Ferguson 4900 and then the John Deere 4955. Both of them run good. I almost think we have too much John Deere at this point because I was really liking the style we were going with, with switching up things. So what I got to do, first things first, garage doors opening and then, or shed doors opening, and then we got to get that Draper, not Draper, but... Uh, the header off of the gooseneck trailer because I still haven't got it. We have to switch out headers and then we're ready to go with oats. Now our only oat fields are right here, which is probably two acres, like nothing. Maybe, maybe, maybe two acres right there. And then we probably got another like three acres over here. So like five acres total. It's not really much, but it's a really good start to harvest. Just slowly getting into it. So I'm going to jump in the old Chevy, and now the intro, guys, that was just for fun. Nothing happened with the Chevy. It was supposed to be like a clicking noise of, of the, of like a tie rod or, or something going out in the, in the, in the front drive train. But uh, that was just for fun, something I just thought of. I was like, let's do it. So nothing's wrong with the Chevy. But as always, if you guys end up enjoying this video, please smash that like button. Help me out with the AD series. We have so many different farming series going on right now. Things are crazy, so I'm trying to get back to the 80 series and still stick with this, which is going to be tough. But anyways, if you guys end up enjoying it, please help me out and hit that like button. Thank you. Okay, Chevy's hooked up. Ball's grease. Trailer's ready. All we got to do is pull her out, and then I think I'm going to just pull the co combine right up to it, attach it, and then go. Man, Chevy looks good like this. Dang. Now, I want to go out to a place where it's easy to hook up the combine. Because right now, so I think what I'm going to do is try to hook it up out here. I don't know how level this is going to be, but this should work. So, we'll pull the truck around right here. That should work, I think. So, we'll park the truck. There we go. And then also, this auger. Well, for oats, we are going to put corn and beans in these two bins. That's how we're going to store them. But for oats, if you guys remember that trailer that's been sitting out here, we had a company come in and get this set up and get it on there. I didn't do it. I didn't know how to do it properly, but we got that bin off the trailer and set up on here. So what we're going to do is pull that auger over here and then start loading in, start loading in those oats to this bin right here. So we're going to fire up the old deer. Okay, we'll let her warm up for a couple minutes and then we're going to get going with oats. Put her in drive. There we go. Now, as the next series rolls around, guys, the 90s rolls around. 
we can change up equipment and we can use 90s equipment. So I may upgrade the combine to a newer 90s combine. Probably keep most of these tractors, but maybe one day I'll get like an 8400 or something like that. Front wheel assist 8400. I think that'd be neat. So what I'm planning on doing is dropping this header somewhere inside. And I think I may just put it, we may just put it right here. If I can fit, uh, we're going to fit in there. Well, right now I don't really have any good place for that header to go into. It what I can't fit the combine through that garage door. This is the only garage door I can fit the combine through. So what we're going to have to do is I'm going to probably have to just put it in here for now. There we go. And we're just going to have to drop her straight on the shop floor, even though I hate doing it. But that's what we're going to have to do. There we go. She's all disconnected. Hop back in the combine. The plan for oats was it was a way to diversify the farm because we were going to mainly do corn and beans. But I noticed there was strong demand from horse people, horse people, if that's a way to describe them, around here that they need oats. So that's what I'm planning on doing, and that was the goal of this. So we'll have to call them up after we get these oats harvested. See if there's still that strong demand. Okay. Keep coming off. And there we go. The header's off. Our grain cart that I bought, the Kilborough's grain cart. The one thing I should have me measured, and this is the first time farming, so I have no idea. But the one thing I should have measured is will the gosh dang combine go over the top of the grain cart? And I pulled her out there after I bought the grain cart. And it doesn't work for height. I just didn't think about that at all. It doesn't work for height. So it's either we don't use the grain cart, keep the grain cart, don't use it until next fall when we trade combines in, or we just trade the grain cart in. Because that would be luck. I think we're going to have to use a grain cart. So what I'm thinking about doing is trade that gosh dang grain cart in that we already bought. And that grain cart was an expensive purchase too. I think it cost a lot of money. So for now, I only have one gravity wagon right now. We're definitely going to have to... Well, we only have one gravity wagon at the farm. Another farmer's been borrowing the other, so we got to get that one back. But for oats, to be honest, we really only need one gravity wagon. And I bet with all these oats we harvest, we don't even fill that gravity wagon completely. So what I'm going to do is pull the 4440. Pull the 4440 around. Hook this up to the auger. And then I guess our gravity wagon tractor... Well, we could either use the 4450 or the 4955. I think we'll just use the 4450. That'll work fine. We really don't need that much horsepower with 4955. It really doesn't matter. Heck, we could even use a truck. The only thing is the loading the loading situation over there, it's going to be a little tight. Luckily, we have the 4440, which can fit into some tight places. But uh, I'm going to be honest. It's going to be a little tight loading over there with that bin where I placed it or where we built it at. So we got the auger hooked up. All I gotta do is pull it around. Well, let's see if we should go. Should we go back this way or should we go through? <sighs> this is gonna be a little rough through here. I'm thinking, oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, this will actually, ah, shoot. We gotta move this planter back. Oh, by the way, the planter won't fit. I can't get this to fit pretty much anywhere. So the only thing I can do is pull it back here, but man, we gotta scooch this back. So what I'm thinking about doing is coming in with the auger right here Getting it up there. Ah, uh, those tree branches are going to be in the way a little bit. That's fine. We'll, we'll squeeze it through there. And then we'll pull the gravity wagons right around this loop. And then that's how we'll load into this bin. Keep in mind, I think we'll only have to pull the gravity wagon around like one time. Maybe, if that. So what I can do to actually move that uh, that planter is use little Johnny. Get little Johnny out. And it, we welded a little hitch on little Johnny. So it sh he should be able, we should be able to connect her and pull back that planter. Let's do that. Little Johnny to the rescue. I love this kids here. I love it. We have yet to find a challenge that little Johnny cannot do. Lift a tractor up in there. He can do it. There we go. Keep going back. Keep going. How close are we? Let's jump out. Okay, we got like two feet, three feet. There we go. Now what we'll do is we'll pull back this drill too. So I'm gonna back up. We'll hook up the drill to little Johnny and then push back the drill also. Keep going, keep going, keep going, and there we go. Okay, unhooked, there we go. Okay, look at that. So now we'll have tons of room through here. This should work. Yeah, we're going to have tons of room through here. So auger and then gravity wagons can just pull right through here. That'll work good. For now, I'm just going to leave little Johnny right here because, heck, we may need these forks to kind of move it, so situate this auger if we can't get it in place. So we'll just leave him right there. 
Now the one thing I don't want to do is take take out these tree branches or damage the auger. So we'll keep going back here, and then we just gotta weave this thing across the tree branches, which is gonna be tough for me. Keep going, raise her up. Okay, we gotta keep going higher. Come on. I had to climb the back side, and I got up here and realized, my gosh, we're still a little off. So now I gotta climb all the way back down and keep backing further, but I'm at least gonna open the cap here. Kind of screwed this up, because the way the PTO attaches comes from the side and we'd be completely blocking the area where the gravity wagon is gonna come through at. So what I'm gonna do is it's just a ton easier using little Johnny. So we're gonna connect little Johnny, move this thing over it, and I got a different plan. Little Johnny, the beast. So what we gotta do is, cause I can't turn too tight with little Johnny, I gotta move all the way around to the complete opposite side across the farm. It'll work though, I think. I think this will work. <laughs> I love this. Dude, the most useful tool on the farm. Little Johnny, Johnny or Naughty. I love it. Look at him go. He just goes. Good boy, gosh dang grain cart by now. Good boy, gosh dang plow. Okay, this is gonna work, I think, yes. This should work. Raise her up. Keep going back. Okay, I gotta eyeball this one. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get it on the spot. We'll see. Okay, so now what we do is we disconnected little Johnny. And all we gotta do here, let me, let me move him. Park him right by the Chevy. So, jump in the 4440 and hook the PTO, we'll just connect the PTO right here. Oh shoot, but do we have enough room to pull a grab? Shoot, I don't know if we have enough room to pull a gravity wagon through. That's the only thing. Actually, you know what? I could pull a, ah, no I can't. Okay, I think we'll be able to make it with a gravity wagon through. The only thing is we'll have to take the duels off the 4450 because we gotta fit right between here to unload and right between this fuel, diesel fuel tank. I'll show, you what, I'll show you guys what I mean. So all we gotta do is pull, oh shoot, this might be a little tougher than I thought. We gotta squeeze this tractor in here. Okay, so we're having some issues. I'm gonna be completely honest. Watch this. This is what happens. So, the 4440 PTO is probably too low, it's looking like. This is a big boy to be running on the auger, but I guess it's a big tractor, but if you think about horsepower numbers, they're pretty much the same. This one just has bigger tires, has a cab on it. Back this up, try to maneuver it in there, and see if we can't get disconnected. This would be perfect if the PTO actually works out good here. Nah, it's not gonna work. Darn it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is there's a PTO connected. Yes, there is a PTO connected there. It's connected. But what we're gonna do is uh, use the 4450 as an auger tractor. Well, because we have the duels on still. So I don't, because I need something with non duels to probably be able to fit in between here. It might fit, but it doesn't matter. It'd, it'd be better around the 4440 through here. So that's what we're gonna do. And then one little thing the gosh dang auger. Is, not, is now moved over. So now I gotta scoop this up. We're just gonna use the forks. Try to push it. Keep going. Okay, keep sliding. There we go. Keep going. There we go. That should be good. It's gonna be a tight squeeze, but I think it'll work through that. We'll pull around with the 4440, hook her up to the gravity wagon, and then we are ready to go for oats as long as that combine doesn't have any issues. I think we'll be, I think we'll be golden. Heck, maybe I should have just put oats in the silo there. That's what I should have done. That would have been a lot simpler. There we go. Gravity wagons hooked up. We're ready to rock and roll. Okay, first things first, we planted this field of oats first. So that's what we're going to harvest first. And then we'll move on to the other side over there. Downshift. And we'll just leave the 4440 right here. We left the gosh dang combine run. I probably left this run for like 30 minutes. My gosh. Okay, we'll jump in there. She's definitely warm now. This is a giant header. My gosh. This thing is gigantic. Okay, everything seems to be working. Drop her down. First harvest of the year. Oh, and you know what? We could actually bale these, this straw that comes out of the oats. I didn't even think of that at all. There she goes, the big old turbo, 8820. Wow. Okay, check, check this out. 
I got all my configuration technology stuff. I have no idea how this stuff even runs. But once we jump back into the oats, there's something called a yield monitor that they just came out with this year. Ag Leader came out with. So we'll see what we're getting. And they put it on, and Deer Johnson Bros put it on this combine. So check this out. Look at the bottom right here. We're getting 139 bushels to the acre with these oats. That's insane. I think this may be a record yielding oat crop. Usually if you can get 80 to 90 per acre, that's insane. Maybe in future generations they'll be pulling like 115, 110 an acre. Who knows, but we're pulling 139 bushels to the acre. Man. And it seems to be pretty constant across the whole field. 139 bushels to the acre. We'll have to see what this ends up pulling. You know, if oats are yielding 139 bushels to the acre, what is my corn going to yield? My corn is going to yield insane. If these oats are, yeah, if these oats are doing 139 push, I wouldn't be surprised if corn's pushing 150 or 160 bushels to the acre. Believe it or not, guys, I know my beans were close to being harvest, being ready to harvest, but that field, there's, a, there's two fields we have planted with beans. One of them you guys saw, one of them you guys didn't see planted. But those fields, they look like the beans are ready to go there. We've had a pretty dry late summer here that looks ready to go i could probably start digging in those beans after these oats today heck if we get them done i just want to dig into the beans to at least see what we're yielding though that's that's the only reason i want to dig into them right now and that's a wrap for our first field so we ended with 205.8 bushels 201 bushels let's see what this is yielding so this is your, I don't know what, what we're yielding. We're yielding like 130, were we, I think we're yielding 136. So this right here is yielding 137.8 bushels to the acre. I think a little better. Or maybe, maybe we're yielding, yielding 139 bushels to the acre over on the other field. I'm not sure. But right now this shows 137.8 bushels to the acre. We have it calibrated pretty good. So it should be pretty accurate. Oh, also, one thing I totally forgot to tell you guys is I sold all my cattle. It was just the stupidest mistake and you have to cut your losses short take what you got so um i sold all the cattle i realized a day in this wasn't for me especially on a side note with the series going i was probably going to kill the cows with the other farming series going too i wasn't going to have time on here to feed the cows every day they were probably going to die it wasn't a good idea it was cool and all but no it was a no-go it was a no-go sorry buck we had to get rid of them we are completely full so what i'm going to do is we can run back and we can grab that 4440, bring it over here, and unload in there. Okay, all we're going to do is just pull right under here. Wait a sec. Hold up. Nope, we'll fit. <laughs> we'll just barely fit. Okay, there we go. She's unloading. It may take us a bit, and heck, we may fill up this gravity wagon. I think it holds 250 bushels in what? We had like 200-something bushels in there? Maybe we had more than 200. Oh, gosh. We may go over. Never mind. We're good. Okay, now for the sketchiest part. You don't want to take out your corn that I could not plant straight. And at the same time, you want to get all your wheat. Oh, gosh. I uh, should have thought about this one a little better. Because, gosh dang it, some of my corn is actually growing through my wheat. Okay, here we go. Take her slow. Take her easy. This is going to be rough. Actually, I'm an idiot. What I need to do is I need to engage the field. I feel like I'm attacking this like it's my enemy, but I need to engage it from the other side because if you think about it, the cab of this combine is on the left side. So I'll be able to see the left side a lot easier than I can the right side because it's offset to the left side. So let's do that. Okay, don't run over the corn. That's the game, name of the game for this pass. We're just scratching her. There we go, and then I kind of screwed up my rows because you guys can see here. I'm going to almost have to like push in, back up, and then get over to the right. Push in, back over, get to the right. There we go. Stop. Back up. Slide to the right. And there we go. We're done. Okay, perfect. Last pass here with oats, and then we are done for the 1989 oats harvest season and then it's off to soybeans i don't know if i'm gonna do soybeans today or not but i do want to dig in and see what the yield is i don't know if we'll get them fully complete i'd love to dig in though everything's running good on the combine 
Oil pressure's there, water temp's there. It's running good, and it's kind of hot today, to be honest. It's, it's 80 degrees out right now. We're going to back the bad boy right there. And then I'm going to jump down here, grab the 4440, and unload these oats in the bin. And then we're done. The beast. So I think what we can do, it depends once we get to corn, and it depends what the yield is for that corn, because my gosh, it looks darn good. And I'm a little biased because it's my corn, but if we have too much corn coming off, we may have to get a we may have to get a grain cart. I think it's probably best to get a grain cart, but we could potentially just run two gravity wagons. I'm not sure yet. So here we go. We gotta fit in between that auger and that diesel fuel tank right there. I think it's doable. Okay, that should be good. Now I gotta jump in the 4450, fire this thing up. And then get this DMI unloading so we can get the oats in the bin. Here we go. Oh, shoot. When it said start filling, I was like, oh, okay, I think we're going to fill with this. But we filled with gosh dang diesel fuel right there. I'm an idiot. Okay. So I don't know why, but for some reason, I cannot get these, I cannot get these oats to unload into here. I don't know what it is. I don't know if I have to be perfectly lined up with the... Wait. Okay, at first I thought you could jump into the auger and maybe control it and drive it. Sometimes you can, but I doubt this one is because it's not meant to be in real life. New plan. Picked up something bigger, better, and better than the old Westfield we have. The gosh dang farm king. Look at this puppy. So it's got fold out, so we'll have no issue. We shouldn't have any issue hooking up the tractor to this, run the PTL, and then just folding out the, uh, the drive over pit. That'll work good. The only thing is this puppy is gigantic. K30 seems to be pulling her good. I gotta watch out for oncoming cars though, because I'm taking up pretty much the whole lane right here. Look at that beautiful sight. Wait, just wait until we get a couple weeks in and the trees start turning. That farm is gonna look gorgeous. Okay, so what we'll do is once we get there, I'm gonna set this farm king up on the new new bin we put in we'll leave the Westfield there heck I got to sell the Westfield most likely but on the new new bin we put in over there that we we're trying to get working I'll set this up I'll probably put the 4450 on this farm king and we'll see if it works I'm guessing it'll work we'll see man it's tough driving around with a long stick just hanging out so we got this sucker back and we got the 4450 hooked up to it. Now, I this is going to be a tight fit because the farm king is absolutely gigantic. And I don't know. I w the thing I love, you guys probably saw the view, but the thing I love, check out this view. Oh, it's perfect for when you're backing up to something. And you're trying to get over the logger or the get it over the bin. But I have no idea how this is going to work out. Let's start raising her up there. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Back her up. This episode literally just needs to be titled, like, fooling around with augers. Because that's all I've been doing. Whether you guys haven't seen it a lot, oh, I've been spending so much time on trying to get these augers going. Okay, right there. Oh, this may work out perfectly. Oh my gosh. And I think I can actually adjust it a little bit. I'm just going to leave it there. I don't even want to mess with it too much. Okay, so we got the tractor hooked up, PTO hooked up. Now, I gotta fit the gravity wagon in between here. I think it's doable. So let's go, and I gotta pick up these oats yet. But let's go grab that 4440, pull it through there, and see if we can't get this unloaded. Okay, here we go. Let's see if anything comes up. Downshift. There we go. I want to get as close as possible to this. You know what's real sad is I'm getting nothing. So I think it's with the DMI gravity wagon. That's okay though, because we'll get this figured out. And we got a really nice auger. Because I'm keeping this farm king. And well, maybe we'll keep the Westfield around. I don't know if we need two auger. Actually, Westfield wouldn't be bad for when we're unloading right here. Wouldn't be bad to have two augers. We just drop her down right here because when we're unloading here, we're still gonna need an auger. There's no way we're fitting a gravity wagon underneath that. So we're still gonna need an auger. And the Westfield may just be perfect for that. But guys, this is going to be the end. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I do want to... Mm. I do want to go dig into those beans. We'll dig into the beans next episode. And see what that yield is. But anyways guys, if you enjoyed it, smash that like button. And hey, I'll see you guys later. Seriously guys, thanks again for watching. Stay safe out there with the coronavirus. 
stay inside. We're just going to have to get this one out for a little bit. So thanks for watching, guys.